Hey mom, can we have Saiga 12? No, we've got Saiga 12 at home. This is Saiga 12 at home. What is up you sexy YouTube mother lovers? This that I'm holding in my hands is uh, the JTS 12 gauge. It is a 12 gauge AK made in China, imported here to the States. And it is similar to the Saiga 12 or the Vepr 12 in the way that it is a 12 gauge uh, AK pattern shotgun. The only difference is it's, <laughs> it's awful. Not a knock on JTS, of course, they're just the importer, but this is, uh, this is definitely a budget, <laughs> budget, very, very budget Saiga 12. But there's still some things that makes it kind of cool and unique, especially on the inside, but we're gonna do a little bit of shooting with it, and uh, we're not gonna do the normal montage this time around, because that might accidentally make some of you think that this gun is cool. So, we'll improvise. JTS-12, ladies and gentlemen. What we have here is a uh, failure to, to communicate. Yeah, so this is a, a bizarre double feed where we have a round that was picked up while it's also trying to chamber the round below it that is still in the magazine. Um, however, ow, just cut myself a wide ass open on that. It did not want to go back down into the magazine. mag is also supposed to be a rock and lock has that little back tab there but you just kind of have to slap it into the fucking gun I hate this gun so we're gonna delve into the guts of this gun and show you basically why this is even worth talking about in the first place considering its stellar performance but first time to thank our sponsor Today's sponsor is NordVPN. It's 2021. If you're not using some sort of VPN, what in the world are you doing? Anytime you're using public Wi-Fi, you're basically just raw dogging the internet. Raw dogging, not something I'd normally be opposed to, but in this case, it's a little different. Whether it's hackers or making it easy for certain three-letter agencies to check out exactly what you're doing online, you need something like NordVPN. But it's not just a safety thing. You can also get access to all sorts of stuff that is only available in other countries. Your favorite show's not available in the US on Netflix anymore? Well, good thing you're not in the US because now you're in Australia. Certain games aren't available in your country? Well, no problem. All you have to do is find one of the servers in which it is and hit problem solved. NordVPN encrypts all of your traffic so your internet service provider can't throttle your streaming speed. And because we're partnering with them, you can either click the link down in the description and in the pinned comment, or you can use the code Herrera. This gets you a two-year plan with NordVPN, plus four additional months, and all at a huge discount. You're welcome. We'd like to thank Nord one more time for sponsoring the channel. Back to the video. Okay, so let's go ahead and break down this JTS-12. First off, there's a couple things I actually like about this shotgun, believe it or not. For one, I love the retained AK elements that even the Saiga-12 doesn't really retain, like the uh, standard-looking rear sight block with the standard uh, AK rear sight leaf. I like that it did a combo block here on the gas block. Um, still has the traditional AK front sight drum and post there, so that's pretty neat. I like that the selector has a cutout that actually is in the right place uh, for still being able to take the magazine out, put it in, whatever. Kind of an odd mixture of straight shove and rock and lock, but uh, that way you can just do what you need to do there and then drop your bolt carrier back forward. I like that. Trigger is present. I also like the aesthetic of uh, having, I, I don't think they're actually interchangeable with AK upper and lower handguards, but they look like it, which I, I enjoy that aesthetically. And that is about all the good things I could say about this. So let's take, let's go ahead and take it apart. 
So you've got a plunger style uh, recoil spring, a uh, little takedown here that prevents you from taking it apart unless you push that little thing down. And then you've got a hinge top cover, which I also do kind of like this, FYI, but you gotta watch your fingers because that looks to fall. Take your recoil spring assembly out. You've got this, which is a moving uh, extra dust cover underneath, which I am just now realizing is plastic. That's interesting. But what that does is uh, it allows you to cover up more of the action, uh, but it also moves as the bolt carrier moves backwards as well, allowing you space to be able to eject a chunky shotgun shell. Put our control group out of the way, take this bolt carrier out, and this is where shit's a little interesting. So carrier here, again, pretty simple. It's a very, very crudely machined, um, but it really doesn't need to be anything fancy. You got a little squid root nose, uh, carrier tail there, cut away up top, and uh, piston is just, yeah, it's, it's super straightforward. And you do have this cutaway here, uh, again, for clearance for ejection. Now let's take a look at this bolt. Um, now this bolt is interesting. Uh, it's two piece here, uh, as you can see this swivels independently of the main bolt body. We've got a spring loaded firing pin, that's kind of neat. If you can zoom in on this, I'm not sure if you can see it, but this is clearly uh, cast. Uh, the bolt is cast, which that's not great. It's a 12 gauge shotgun, so it really doesn't matter as much as a rifle round because you're working with significantly lower pressure, but, but yeah, uh, this, is, this is definitely a cast bolt. For the uninitiated, when you have an AK, especially with uh, the parts that hold your lock up uh, being cast, that's usually not a good thing. Also have an interesting cam groove, cam lug set up here, which of course you know I'm a nerd about. Because if you look in here, and I remember I've taken these apart before, uh, but the cam groove is just completely round, which is unlike a standard AK, uh, which is more of like uh, the, the cam lug itself is kind of at like a 45 degree angle there, uh, just so it has a long flat contact surface the whole way. Whereas this one is more round. This looks like it could be done by a uh, roller bearing if they wanted to, but it's not the way they did it. Oh, his cam group is kind of reversed. It's definitely funky. This is definitely different. This is a departure from the typical AK in a lot of ways. But you have your typical uh, lock up here where you've got your two locking lugs, uh, one on either side, and that up top is your cam lug. In an interesting what the fuck moment, I've just realized something. You have a what would traditionally be your locking tab down here on pretty much any other like AK based thing. Uh, you got your front tab in the same place but your rear tab's all the way up here, which means in the guts of the gun, the locking tab is all the way up inside of here. Like uh, it's in the, the it's, it's like on the same level as the fire control group. Um, it ends like up here, like right by the center support. That's strange, uh, most are not like that. You may notice it also has a third pin. I noticed that. It doesn't do anything, but seriously, like that, this gun has a third pin. Okay. I guess because the parts would be totally different, this isn't considered a machine gun, uh, just because a standard auto sear would not work in this. doesn't have an auto lug or anything like that on the bulk carrier. Um, still odd they decided to include it, but I'm no attorney. I just work here. Yeah, your rear trend in here too, I'm just looking at it now, definitely mega cast, like very, very cast, which rear trend is not really the end of the world, but still worth pointing out. Now on the front of the gun here, uh, we have a gas regulator. So you see it's got four different settings here. So this right here has a little paddle on the front of the gas block combo that allows you to push this down and change your gas settings and it locks on all of those. So uh, whether you're running light target loads, birdshot or buckshot or slugs, this will uh, allow in more or less gas, uh, depending on what you're shooting. You want less gas if you're shooting something like slugs, uh, slugs or buckshot, uh, because that's going to beat the shit out of the gun otherwise, but you want more gas if you're running something like target loads, birdshot, something that's kind of light, uh, because you want to give it every chance it has to cycle. And uh, this thing really does need the extra help. Overall, <coughs> I thought I knew the worst thing <laughs> to come out of China last year um, until I saw this.
So with that glowing uh, breakdown, back to the range. So now we're gonna do two different white claw tests. We're gonna do, well, of course, both with, with mango, but for the first one, stay. We're gonna do it with buckshot, and then we're gonna try it again with the slugs, just to see the difference. Let's just face it, both of them are gonna rip this thing to absolute shit, but it's gonna be kinda cool to watch. Now, for those of you guys who may not understand shotgun fundamentals and don't really understand why I'm shooting it with two different loads, this is double aught buck. This is multiple pellets uh, all inside of this one shell. Uh, what a slug is, is just a big ass one ounce hunk of lead. So it doesn't spread, it doesn't have a spread like a normal shotgun, uh, but it does carry a shitload of energy. So we're gonna see how uh, the white claws react to both loads. All right, first up, double up buck. I had no clue how bad the out of the box zero is on this gun. It's. I mean, it's not like I had it all the way up here or anything. It's down at the regular point blank setting. All of the pellets missed this. And I was at like five yards. I had the irons lined up dead nuts on it. That is actually embarrassing. So if somebody's running at you with a JTS, apparently the safest place to be is directly in front of the irons. All right, another round loaded. I'm gonna try to aim a little lower. I'm hoping that was just a crazy hide over bore kind of thing, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Okay, so I am going to aim directly at that white claw. I got another, Another round of buckshot loaded. And aim directly at that white claw and we're gonna see where the pattern is on this. Cause I, I frankly at this point have no fucking clue where this is shooting. What the fuck? Okay. So all of the pellets hit on the bottom side. So I'm assuming if I hold a little high this time, we'll actually be able to get a shot on a white claw at fucking five yards. Man, maybe the keyboard warriors who say you can't hit shit with AKs just only shot these. I'm gonna hold high, see what happens. I know shit had to hold like fucking half a foot above the target at like five yards. But we got a direct hit here. Peeled the can wide open. I think so, we impacted here, kind of split out the side. I was gonna see if we caught any pellets on the inside. We didn't. But I'd say that white claw is taken care of. All right, now we've got the 12 gauge slug. I'm gonna get even closer. Give this thing, you know, best chance it's got. Oh my God, the energy transfer on that is fucking crazy. Just completely canoed this thing apart. So it would have hit here, would have entered from this side and exited here, but you really couldn't tell by looking at it. It's so fucking blown out. This thing's just ribboned. And that's the power of the home, de I mean uh, slug, a 12 gauge rifled slug. So we wanted to show a little bit more how much energy transfer you actually get out of these one ounce slugs. So we've got a gallon of milk up there because um, he needs some milk. Ah, fuck. I knew that was going to happen. At least I kind of thought it would. Still disappointed. This probably does a better job of showing you exactly how much energy we got going on here. And it still kept on trucking into the berm. That's fucking crazy. I need to take a shower now. All right, so normally this is the part of the video where I'd load up a couple rounds, just dump a few into the berm, and then turn to talk to you guys and give you an outro spiel, but no, no, not this time. I'm done. I'm done shooting this. Um, I have not had a good time out here shooting this gun, and um, I've actually got some creative plans for 
how I'm going to destroy this later. So um, it was neat. It's neat to see all the different ways that, you know, AKs have been done. I just, I, I don't like it. I, I don't like this one. Again, not a hit piece on JTS, they're just the importer, but fuck me, I do not like this gun at all. Anyways, this was a very, very honest look at this shotgun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, as always, I'll see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks guys.